Hello, this is Kevin Burke, and this is a short video on how you can use the program Sunvox to write 8-bit style music like the classic Nintendo Entertainment System. If this is your first time in the music lab and your first time opening Sunvox, then I first suggest that you watch the tutorial by May on the basics of using Sunvox. A link to that video is below in the description. Uh, they had use of only five channels, and Sunvox comes uh, preloaded with four channels. Zero counts as number one. So to add that fifth channel, all you need to do is either double-click or right-click in this region here, and click down to Pattern Properties, and number of tracks is four. You'll raise that to five. And now you have the five different channels that were capable in the old Nintendo Entertainment System. The first two channels in the Nintendo Entertainment System were designed for pulse wave generators using a square wave. So what I'll do first is create uh, two different generators, and I'll make sure that I link those. Two. And both of these will be set to a square wave. Now for these square waves, you can see a picture of it down here. There were four different options for the square wave based on the duty cycle. And the duty cycle, it refers to the repetitions of this wave and the proportions by which its width is um, raised above and below. And it comes preset at 511, which is exactly 50%. That means that the top of the square wave and the bottom of the square wave are going to be exactly the same width. And this is what the 50% duty cycle square wave will sound like. And you might remember that sound from a lot of your classic games. But the other duty cycles that were allowed were at 25 and 75%. And so if we were to subtract or divide 5 and 11 by half to take us to 25%, that would be 250. 5, 256, we'll just go with 256, and that's at roughly 25% on the, on the square wave here. It has a different sound. That's the 25% duty cycle, and here is the 50% duty cycle. Now I could take this to 75%, that was one of the programming options. Six or seven will be fine. Compare that with 256. It sounds exactly the same. And that's because it's just completely symmetrical, that if you have a 25% duty on the top and a 75% duty on the bottom, and you reverse those where you had the 75% duty on the top and the 25% duty on the bottom, you would come out with the exact same sound. The fourth option is a 12.5% duty cycle. And so what we'll do is we'll take 256 and divide that in half, and that'll take us to 128. And this has a different sound to it as well. The third channel was always a pulse wave with the triangle wave. So what I'm going to do next is create another module, a generator, and I'll go ahead and connect this generator to the output. And just to not get confused here, I'm going to go ahead and double click this generator and I'm going to choose a different color. I'll make this a yellow color so as to not confuse it with the other two generators. And with this one, it's already set, we're going to use the triangle wave and you can see the image of the triangle wave here on the bottom. And the triangle wave was often used mostly for bass lines, but it does have kind of a nice uh, flute-like sound in the upper register. So here's the upper register. And then if we take this down a couple octaves, we can listen to it as sort of a bass line. I take the volume up just a little bit. The fourth channel was reserved for a noise generator. So we're going to create fourth generator, new module, generator. And we'll make sure we link this to our output. And I'm going to change the color of this one. Uh, we'll go with red. That's fine there. 
And you can see the noise waveform here, and it sounds a lot like the staticky sound you would get on an, a TV when you have it, uh, no connection to a cable or a satellite. You can see that there is some pitch approximation that takes place in the noise wave sound. It's much brighter and condensed in the upper register, and a lot wider, a little more of a tone to it in the lower register. You can also change the attack and release time. So for example, if I raise the release time, it will sustain for a long period of time. It's much shorter here. You can also uh, raise the attack. Kind of sounds like uh, wind blowing, so you can use that for particular effects. Now, the fifth channel, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with. Um, this channel was uh, reserved for sound sample bank. Uh, and if you do want to use this, um, the way to do that is to go online and look for some of those classic samples. Uh, sometimes you can find them for free. Or, and if you want to load those, what you'll need to do is create um, a new module and select the sampler here. And the sampler, of course, will need to be linked to your output. And when you get to the sampler, you'll see that on the menu on the left, you've got a lot more options here. And you'll want to click on Load. And from Load, you come into a folder that you may have on your computer where you've installed uh, a lot of those uh, banks of sound samples. And you'll select the sample that you want to use. It might be the sound of a gunshot or a gong or something that you can't generate just with the uh, regular waveforms. We'll come in and just put in a little bit of a short tune right here. The uh, two square waves, I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I'll set this one here to square uh, 12.5. And that way it'll help me uh, keep track of the different samples I'm using. I'm going to actually bring these over a little bit closer to the output just so it's a little bit easier to see them. And I'll put them close by here and then I can zoom in bring them over here so I can see them a little bit better. And that way when I'm putting the music in, I can very easily click on them and know which ones that I'm using.